Well, good day to you, Zion Church. Pastor Scott here on this Lenten service introduction to introduce you to a friend of mine. I met Kirby Holbrook, the pastor at Clever United Methodist Church in Clever, Missouri, uh, some years ago when I was in Sykeston. He was looking to do a cross-cultural and a cross-state campaign of, of ministry, and he helped out with Smith Chapel United Methodist Church in Sykeston, and then, then used our facility at Wesley, while I was the pastor there, to, to stay and house his, his workers for the, for the days that they were there. And then they helped us put on a one-day vacation Bible school where we banded together with all three of these churches and, and made that work. And it was a great celebration of times for churches to work back and forth with each other, giving each other aid and comfort in one way versus another. And they did a, a, a remarkable job on the Smith Chapel of properties that were there, the parsonage and the church. And then it was good to get to know Kirby and some of the people from his congregation. Since then, we've struck up a friendship. And when I thought about doing this online activity, I thought about him and, and what he could do for us. So he's put together a short devotional for us on identity. And it was uh, quite something when I saw his video. Uh, he, he shot it straight up and down like this is for you. And so I thought I'd do the same thing and introduce him in the same way that he'll, his video will shoot. And he uh, talks about something that I talked about this past Sunday, the word paradox. And so I texted him about, uh, about a minute and a half into his video as I was watching it and said, I just got started watching and, and here's a slide from this week's sermon that I preached. And uh, he said, I, I promise I didn't, I didn't see your service ahead of time. So we didn't, we didn't plan that at all, but he's gonna talk to us a bit about a paradox with regard to identity. So he jumps right in with the prayer request, so he will ask you to bow your heads right as we begin. Let's prepare our hearts to move into a time of learning about identity with Pastor Kirby Holbrook. Would you bow your heads with me for a moment? Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations in our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O oh God, our rock and redeemer, amen. Well, I've been given this assignment uh, by Reverend Griffin, Griffith to uh, uh, talk about identity. And he, given us, he gave us a wide scope on that. And I've thought and thought and thought about this and prayed about it. And I think that before we talk about identity, whether it's our own identity, the identity of the church, the identity of Christ, the identity of God, the identity of Satan. There's all kinds of ways we could go with this. But I think there's a word that we have to understand <clears throat> before we can actually understand identity. And that word is paradox. You see, everything in life is paradoxical. Everything in Scripture is paradoxical. What does that mean? It means that some things are true. Other things that seem to be opposite are also true. And yet, when you put them together, they make a higher truth. I'll give you an example. As far as our identity, in Genesis, God starts out by saying that we were made in God's image. And it was good. <coughs> Pardon me. Uh, but yet, in Romans 3.23... It says that we are all sinners and fallen short of the glory of God. So which is it? Are we good in God's image or are we all sinners? Well, that is true. Yes. So how can we know our identity? Are we bad people? Are we good people? How do we know about that? Aren't we supposed to understand, didn't God write the Bible so that we can understand more about God? Isn't that why Jesus came to teach us about who God was, who the identity of God was? Uh, but yet, Paul writes in Corinthians 13 that now we can only see dimly. It's like looking in a, in a fogged up mirror. But someday we will know. So I'm not sure how much we really are capable of understanding. So who are we? Who are we? Are we the good people that God created in his image? Are we the low-life, rotten sinners that all have fallen short? And the truth is, yes, we are. We are both that. So how can we find our identity? Well, the first step 
is to be able to look honestly and genuinely within ourselves. That's hard to do because we're all born little narcissistic people. We're all self-centered. Part of maturing and growing and aging is that we grow out of that narcissism and become more connected and in relationship to the world around us and to God. But it takes time for that. And that's what Jesus was talking about, that when we live in the world, we are living within ourselves. We are living in our own narcissistic, everything's about me. And even though we try to be good people, and sometimes we do good things for people, for sure, but we have to be able to go a little deeper and say, well, what's my motivation for that? Am I doing that because I want people to like me? Am I doing that because I want to just feel good about myself? That's living in the world. Not bad. Not bad things. But when we're able to look and say, I have to die to myself. Does that sound familiar? You must be reborn. You must be reborn. In other words, you must take a whole different look at your identity. Yes. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. God knew us before we were even created in the womb. God knew us. Are we all sinners? Have we all fallen short? Yes. Yes, we have. And maybe we should take a look at the definition of sin. Sin is not an action. I mean, there are things that we do that may be sinful, but sin itself is just one thing. It's living apart from God. Sin, in Latin, means without. If you order chili, you order it with meat, it's with con carne. If you order chili without meat, it's sin carne. In other words, it is without. When we live in sin, apart from God, we are living apart from the meat of God. We are not putting our total and full faith in the body and sacrifice of Jesus Christ. And you see, that's the great paradox. Look at John 3.16, probably the, the most famous Bible verse ever. For whosoever believeth in me shall not perish, but have ever, whosoever believeth shall not perish and have everlasting life. But people forget to read down. The next verse, 17, for I did not come into the world to condemn the world, but that the world would be saved. So which is it? Well, the fact is, all we can really know about ourselves is to have the assurance that we are created in the image of God. That God loved us so much that he did give his only begotten son. That only by being objective with ourselves, coming to the point where we can say, Lord, I am living apart from you. And I live apart from you every day. But by your grace and by your sacrifice, that when I come to that reality, that you have covered that sin, you have paid the price yourself. And once I come to that understanding, even as much as a mustard seed, even for a moment, I may have to recapture that moment 10,000 times in my lifetime. But when I come to that moment, then I know who I am. I am a person, a human, a man who lives in Nixa. I'm a Caucasian man. I'm a musician. I have all of these different things that make up who I am. But who I truly am is, is a child of Jesus Christ, a friend, a brother, a sister, a mother. As Christ said himself, he is all to us as we seek to be all to him. If you're struggling for an identity today, if you're looking for who you are, start where you have to start, at the foot of the cross. Look to Jesus Christ. Adopt and embrace that paradox. Lord, I am a sinner. 
but I am perfectly and wonderfully made by your grace. God bless each of you during this Lenten season. I pray that whatever identity you're looking for, whether it's as a disciple, as a pastor, as a teacher, as a parent, as a brother, as a sister, remember it's through God's Holy Spirit that we are enabled to live as God chose to have us live, as Christ calls us to live, in love for even those who come against us. For the identity that we seek is to be like Christ. So may you be Christ-like in each step you take. God bless you and shalom. In Christ's name, this is Pastor Kirby Holbrook from Clever Methodist Church.